Our scripture today is about Doubting Thomas, one of the better known scripture stories. I grew up thinking it was a story that admonished Thomas for not believing without seeing. However, this isn't how I see it today. Let's start with the other disciples when Jesus first appeared to them when Thomas wasn't there. They were locked in a room for fear of the Jews. But let's put ourselves in their position for a moment. Jesus was crucified three days ago. I'm sure they were feeling overwhelmed with feelings of failure, loss, and shame. They had abandoned Jesus in his hour of need, just as Jesus had predicted. Peter denied him three times, and Judas betrayed him. Then, to make things worse for the disciples, Mary Magdalene comes to them and tells them that she has not only seen Jesus, but she's spoken to him, and she sent him with a message for them. But they still stay put. Their fear and feelings have them locked in room. Maybe they were feeling disappointed and disillusioned that Jesus had not appeared to them. Then suddenly, Jesus is there with them, with four simple words of greeting. Peace be with you. Jesus isn't angry. There are no recriminations. There's simply peace. Jesus has offered his grace. Jesus' gift to his disciples and to us is peace in place of any anxiety or fear we are feeling. Jesus then shows them his hands and side. Then the disciples are put at ease and can rejoice to be with Jesus again. Once again, Jesus says to them, Peace be with you. As God has sent me, so I send you. Jesus has extended his grace, and we are being called to do the same. Then Jesus breathes on them and says, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. These words were not just meant for the disciples, they were meant for us today too. Just as Jesus gave his gift of peace to the disciples, we are being called to go out in the world and do the same for others. We are not given an easy task, neither were the disciples. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. It's awfully powerful. It's up to us to forgive those who have wronged us. But what if we can't let go of the hurt and betrayal? What does that do to us when we hold on to the anger? It may be a very difficult task, but for our own health and well-being, Forgiveness or the letting go is a very important part of the healing process for us. What forgiveness was needed that day for the disciples? According to Jesus' greeting, none was needed. He blesses them with his peace. It is his gift to them, and that gift is still being extended to us. Jesus did not judge the disciples. He knew what was going to happen and still offered them his grace and peace. But what does peace look like to us today? The definition of peace is freedom from disturbance, quiet and tranquility, or freedom from or the cessation of war or violence. There is not much peace in our world today. So what can we do in this day and age to perpetuate peace? What would Jesus do or say to us to help us bring peace to the world? I wish I had the answers, but I don't. But I do believe that Jesus would commission us to go out into the world and share stories about his life and ministry. Now we get to the heart of the passage, Thomas's encounter with Jesus. Doubting Thomas would not believe until he saw the mark of the nails in his hands and put his finger in the holes in his hands inside. Just as Jesus appeared to the other disciples, he comes among them again with no anger and no recriminations, just peace. And this is where my thinking has changed. Isn't doubt just a natural part of faith? I believe so, and this made me think of Phyllis. As we learned at her memorial 
life service, she was always searching for the answers, always searching for their deeper connection to God. If anything, this makes me admire Phyllis even more. She did so much to help us advance our belief. Is doubt about our belief a bad thing? Definitely not. I'd be a liar if I said I'd never had any doubts about my faith. And I can name two times. The first one was after my father died in those first days and weeks and years. And I just had to wonder, where was God? But he was there. He was there beside me. And the second time was my sixth, after my sixth and final failed attempt at in vitro fertilization. God doesn't always answer our prayers, but she is always with us. It's okay to question our faith and the stories we read in the Bible. God can handle our doubts. In fact, I believe she welcomes them. Our God is loving, forgiving, and most of all, filled with grace. Personally, that makes me love God even more because I know that her grace is never ending. And that is good news for all of us. But back to Thomas. Jesus shows Thomas his scars and he recognizes Jesus from the scars he carries. Jesus simply says, do not doubt, but believe. No admonishment, just a simple statement of grace. Thomas responds with a statement or confession of faith. My Lord and my God. Thomas's doubts have been laid to rest. Jesus has risen. That is why we sing jubilant Easter hymns and call ourselves Easter people. Not because suffering doesn't or didn't exist, but because God, through Jesus, overcomes suffering and death and transforms our lives in all of creation. Jesus responds with, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. Once again, Jesus is not admonishing Thomas, but rather Jesus is promising something more. Not only for the disciples, but us as well. In this week after the celebration of Easter, we are promised that there is something more for us. Even in the face of climate change and natural disasters such as wildfire, floods, and hurricanes, even in the face of personal hardships, disease, sickness, and strife, we are promised something more. Just as the disciples were overwhelmed and afraid and fighting to think straight, we too can fall into that rut. <clears throat> but we have the promise of God's grace through the sacrifice of Jesus. We are not abandoned, just as the disciples weren't abandoned. God and Jesus are still with us, walking beside us in our times of strife, carrying us. That is the promise that Jesus makes to the disciples, but is meant for us as well. We can't do it on our own, but with the help of God, we can carry on. The scripture moves us from the repentance of Lent into the new life found in Jesus' resurrection. Just as Jesus forgave the disciples, we too are forgiven, and Jesus holds no grudges, so neither should we. In serious seasons of the Spirit, they remind us of the killing of five children in an Amish school. They write, on October 2nd, 2006, Charles Roberts entered an Amish schoolhouse in Nickel Mines, Pennsylvania, and shot ten children, killing five of them. One of the immediate reactions of the community after tearing down the schoolhouse, was to forgive Roberts. In his book, Stephen Knowles, a professor of history and Anabaptist studies at the Regents of Elizabethtown College and co-author of the book, Amish Grace, How Forgiveness Transcended Tragedy, said the decision to forgive the killer would, would have been a collective one in about giving up the right to revenge and gorgeous. Noel's book offers a deep perspective on forgiveness in a time when it would seem to be impossible to imagine. What we do to promote heal, what do we do to promote healing in this world? I try to listen when people share their problems. What would our encounters be like if we started with 
peace be with you. I wonder how people outside the church would react. I would invite everyone to give it a try this week and see what happens. <coughs> In our scripture, the disciples remain behind a locked door, even after Mary Magdalene has told them she has seen and spoken to Jesus, even after Jesus has appeared to them, and even a week later after he appears for a second time. Why are the doors locked now? What keeps us locked in the room? The world outside can be frightening. But Jesus promises us something more. He also promises consolation for the world beyond our locked doors. We can't see Jesus for us, so for us, we must believe what we have heard and see with our hearts. Jesus will come back and find us where we are and lead us to new life. At the point of our greatest need, God and Jesus are with us. Our scripture ends with, now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and through living and through believing, you may have life in his name. I will leave you with these words. When Jesus first appeared to the disciples, he had no words of anger or admonishment because they left him in his hour of need. He gave a gift of peace. Jesus said, peace be with you. And as God sent Jesus, God sends us to out into the world that God loves. Peace be with you. Amen.